Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Robbie Borth, and you are here uh, with the Ludiverse Lab. Uh, this is the uh, well. The Ludiverse Lab is a a I guess I could call it a kind of experience that I've uh, kind of put together and organized, where I try to bring uh, some uh, teachers and educators together to uh, have some experience with a role-playing game and then uh, give some thought to how uh, this kind of uh, game or scenario or hack of a game uh, might be used in uh, the educational context. And uh, today we are finishing up what I have sometimes referred to as the summer trilogy where we've been looking specifically at fantasy role-playing games, uh, which are being kind of pulled in some uh, interesting and provocative directions. So in uh, June, we had Richard Ruane with uh, Barrow Keep, where uh, he uh, kind of brings in some uh, social and political intrigue into the gaming uh, context. Uh, last month in July, we had Ryan Windeconnect who is at the helm, he'll be a player with us today, but Ryan has uh, done some uh, hacking of uh, World of Dungeons and Dungeon World to put together uh, some material that uh, can be used in his philosophy classes. Uh, and then uh, this month, uh, to complete the trilogy, we are uh, fortunate to have Jesse Bernico with us, who uh, has a project called uh, Dungeons and Dilemmas which he'll be uh, kind of introducing to us and we'll get some experience with uh, that environment. Um, just uh, very briefly about myself, uh, I am a, a high school English teacher. I teach at a place called Trinity Preparatory School, uh, which is in uh, Central Florida. And uh, I'm just gonna go around my screen and we'll go to Ryan next. I'm Ryan Windeconet. Uh I have been, I use he, him pronouns. Um, I've been gaming for a while now and using games in the classroom for the last four years or so to teach my philosophy classes. Uh, as Robbie said, uh, last month we play tested my world of professionals here on the Ludiverse and I'm excited to see uh, what Dungeons and Dilemmas can bring to our fantasy role playing. And uh, John, can we get to you next? My name is John Cassie. I am the Director of Curriculum and Innovation at TVT Community Day School. It is uh, the Jewish Community Day School of Orange County, California. Uh, I was in Ryan's uh, experience last month. It was dynamite, learned a lot. Um, had a great time uh, kind of working through your scheme and uh, meeting some new folks. Um, I host the Game Level Learn podcast on which uh, Robbie and Tim have both appeared. Uh, Ryan will will get that sorted out, and Jesse, you know, as well, if you're uh, if you're so inclined. Um, I was hoping to have Tracy here as well, obviously, because she's my uh, uh, she's my co-host. Uh, and on that show, we do um, that's sort of an all-purpose uh, uh, game-based learning and gamified instruction kind of kind of jam. Um, and we're in our fourth season right now, which is uh, kind of exciting, right? We've made about 30 episodes, which is pretty amazing when you set out. Think, well, maybe we'll get to five, you know, <laughs> but hey, we're doing all right. So, and, uh, you know, I'm intrigued to learn, Jesse, what what, uh, what your jam is. So, Okay. And uh, Tim? Yep, that's me. I am Tim Handley. I am a scientist turned educator. So I was an ecologist with the National Park Service for a while, which was uh, super interesting and also uh, sad in many ways because I felt like um, we knew the answers to lots of problems that people weren't solving because they didn't believe us, we being science and biology and so on. Uh, being a lifelong gamer, I thought I can put those things together and do some cool outreach. So that's what I do now is I sit at this intersection between science and education and games. And so I teach science to middle school students and I teach game design to adults and then I make games about science. Okay. And uh, Jesse, putting you up at the helm, if you just say a little bit about yourself and then you can just kind of take us into the Dungeons and Dilemmas. 
Sure. Uh, so uh, I'm Jesse. Uh, I uh, my day job is uh, I make little mobile video games. Uh, if you uh, you know look at love those little like gem matching games that try to get lots of money out of you as you play them. That's what I make for a living. <laughs> um, and uh, I you know I have I have this. Uh, I, yeah, I have a vast library of, of role-playing games, and my interest in, in role-playing games is very wide. Uh, some people, um, you know, they kind of have their thing. Um, you know, I like everything from just, like, straight-up D&D to, like, the most esoteric, like, let's, you know, write sad things on index cards, story games. Um, and so... And so... Uh, and I do some I do some side design work you know, of my own uh, that I'm hoping to publish at some point. Uh, Dungeons and Dilemmas is sort of a, a, a trying to stick my toe into like the actual publishing pipeline. Um, what I wanted to do with Dungeons and Dilemmas is um, there's a lot of argument, there's a lot of internet argumentation about kind of D and D or the dun, you know, uh, the sort of adventure format of you know, oh, we're a bunch of, you know, bloodthirsty, ruthless adventurers who go into people's homes who don't look like us and we loot them and, and you know, you know, with the, the rise of, you know, uh, role-playing games as consumptive entertainment with, you know, all these streaming shows and everything. Um, there's a lot of criticism about that, like, you know, oh, why aren't you playing, you know, more, more character-based games or more, you know... Uh, these things are better than the, than the tool D and D, um, and I really thought about it, and I said, I don't think one of the reasons that the adventure game format is so compelling is because it's easy. You're a bunch of adventurers. There's a problem over there. Go solve it. Like you don't have to think deeply about your character. You don't have to be like, oh, like you know, Burning Wheel. I've got all these beliefs and all these things. I, you don't have to be a highly driven character. I have to have this fully formed concept. I mean, you know, uh, even a game like Apocalypse World sort of jumps right into like, oh, I'm in this like social situation, right? It's like, I just kind of want to be a wizard and go explore some cool place, right? So I, I thought about, you know, and, and there's a very particular way that I, I run I run D&D. &D. Actually, the, the game we're going to run, we're actually not going to play D&D, &D, but it's going to be the format of, of your group of adventurers. There's a problem over there. Go solve it, um, because what Dungeons and Dilemmas is an attempt to do is to come up with a essentially a dungeon design process that is still it's emotionally grabby and it's morally charged, right? It's not just hey, there's a group of orcs here, you know, that are you know raiding a local farmland, you know, go clean them out or something like that. Um, it's it's meant to make the place that you're exploring mean something. Uh, and what you choose to do with what you discover, think, conclude, feel about the place as you're exploring it is kind of up to you, right? And that's kind of where, like, the dilemma comes in. I mean, you might go in there and go, yeah, everybody in here is evil. Let's just kill them all, take their stuff, and leave. That's a perfectly set you know, suitable outcome. It's not meant to be, you know, torturous. Or you might go, hey, you know what, this poor, you know, being over here that's trapped in this cage that has this really sad story behind it, like, maybe we should do something about that. Or nothing at all, or not, this is not my problem. The point is, is that it's still meant to be easy, right? It's still meant to be, it's just meant to, like, be a little deeper than, you know, your, your you know, some of, some, some other types of adventures. So what I'd like to do here is um, I've written a scenario specifically for to, to, to run you guys with. Um, we'll do that forever long. You may get through the whole thing in one session. It may because I know that I was scheduled to do this also next weekend. Uh, it we, it may spill over in the next session. Uh, but with whatever time we have left over after you guys have played the adventure, or even if we want to call the adventure early, you know, um, I will then go into more detail about the actual process. Like, I'll say, like, okay, now that you've seen what the result is, here's how I got there uh, and my thinking about it. Um, so with that, um, let me...
Let me start by explaining the actual game we're going to play because it's super easy and it helps make things move along. So the game we're going to play um, is, <laughs> is a game called Strain. Um, it comes from it comes from a small little game that that not many people have heard of called Zas or Kala. Um, and the guy who wrote Zas or Kala uh, kind of did it in three layers. He wrote a game. He wrote his game. His main game called Zas or Kala, which is this. It's kind of like I don't know, Gamma World meets Silent Hill is the only way I can describe it. It's this weird post-apocalyptic, psychic, psychic post-apocalyptic, bizarre like survival thing then he took the then he took just the system out of zasser kala and called the like his generic system strain but then he boiled that down even further to um uh to a game he calls strain basic and strain basic is this lovely one page thing um that i sometimes describe as a dungeon world with teeth um, it's a, it, if you're familiar with Dungeon World at all, it's basically, imagine that the only move in the game was defy danger, and every time you failed, things got worse. Like, that's <laughs> kind of, that's kind of what it is. And, <laughs> um, so you will see some, uh, so there's, there's five pages in this document, uh, one character on each, so I'm kind of hoping you can just scroll to the page you want. Um, they are, uh, these five sample characters are designed to very much just tie into basic D&D &D archetypes. There's basically a fighter, a cleric, a rogue, a wizard, and a paladin. You see this, you see that thing called stress? Um, it's like a little bar that goes from three to nine that I've put at the top of your sheet. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The reason there's an X in the three is because everybody has three stress. That's the lowest you can be. Life is, you know, always three points worth of stress. <laughs> just, just being alive. Um, whenever you're asked to do anything, um, you have a choice. You can roll one, two, or three ten-sided dice. You just decide how many how many ten sides do, do I want to roll. <coughs> um, when you roll your dice, you only look at the highest value of the three dice. So I roll three d ten. My highest die is a nine. I got a nine. What you are trying to do is you are trying to have your single highest dice come up above your current stress. So the stress is also your target number. So it starts out at three. If you are applying a specialty, like I'm attacking something with my mace because I happen to be looking at the character sheet page, your, your mace is rank one, so you would add one to your roll because you have a relevant specialty. Um, if you are using an item, there's one of two ways you can use an item. And there's a reason there's rank numbers there. If you are using an item in conjunction with a specialty, the item just adds one. But if you're using the item in place of a specialty, like a specialty you don't have, you can actually add the rank of the item. Okay. And that's really it. <laughs> Here's the deal. The reason you get to choose one, two, or three three dice is because there's a bit of a press your luck mechanic here, which is that for every one that you roll, your stress goes up by that many. So if you roll three dice and all three come up ones, your stress goes up by three. Um, stress taps out at nine. It, it will never go higher than nine. <clears throat> However... <throat> But there were. <laughs> Thank yeah. God. Yeah. However, two things happen. If it goes, if if it were to go above nine, um, you can be at nine. But if it technically you do anything that would cause it to go over nine, um, you become so stressed out you can no longer use your specialties. You just can't focus anymore. So your all your specialties go off the table. Um, also. Every time it would go above nine, instead of going above nine, we add five to your doom score. Your doom score is read as a percentage. It is the chance you will die. <laughs> um, 
Now, every time Doom goes up, you don't necessarily roll to see if you die. So Doom can go up, tick, 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 tick. You might be fine. It's just if you encounter something that I go, yeah, that could that could kill you. You probably should make a Doom roll. It's treated as a percentage, and you know if you if the percentage fails, you die. Um. Uh, what else should I cover? Okay. When you roll the dice, if your highest die plus whatever modifiers you're adding to it um, are 10 or greater, that's a complete success. You just get whatever it is you stated your intent was. If it's above your stress but not 10 or greater, that's a partial success. So essentially something you get it, but I get to add a complication. Below your stress is is, is failure. Um there is a concept of a critical success, which is if, if you roll a 10 and you get no ones, that's a critical success. What's neat about that is that if you were applying a specialty, you actually can make it, you can make a more specific specialty that is rank two. So you may actually improve your character over the course of the game or rank three. So basically, and those are supposed to get more specific as it goes on. So you might start with like mace and get a critical success while, you know, uh, hitting someone in the face with it. So you might have a rank two, you know, skull crushing. So anytime you're trying to crush someone's skull, you can use rank two, right? Uh, or maybe we're trying to break down a door. So your next specific one is like door bashing, right? Or something like that. So they get, they're supposed to get more specific the further down the ranks you go. So that may or may not come up. It sometimes comes up. People get lucky. And that's really the whole game. But from a character's perspective, I don't... Okay, I have Sarah, the, the sort of pseudo-cleric. Uh, I have Ovid and slash John. That's me. Okay. Uh, the the pseudo-wizard. Um, I have Marlo. Uh, the Mar yeah, Marlo, the, the pseudo rogue, and Tomarzo, the pseudo paladin. Okay. Oh, yeah, you should also feel free to uh, interpret those specialties um, however you like. You don't necessarily need to stick to like D D archetypes. Like, there's a reason the wizard just has spells. Like, just. Whatever that means to you. Same thing with prayers. Same thing with auras, for that matter. For the, like, you know, you know, just uh, you know, have have fun with it. You know, whatever whatever your vision of these archetypes are, you know, feel free to to play with that because the the the, the game will add trouble for you. I don't I don't need to worry about if you're too OP or not. Uh, <laughs> uh, cool. So. Um, in, in, in typical adventure fashion, uh, adventure fashion, um, you have been hired by a local magistrate to look into a problem. There's a little town, and um, recently um, there have been a couple of wealthy families who were uh, basically two things. They're uh, they were all found dead <laughs> one morning, and uh, their homes had been stripped of all valuables, like, in the middle of the night. Um, there was, like, uh, not a lot of signs of violence. Um, they... Uh, they all appeared to, uh, they were all very, they were all very pale uh, when they, like, like um, the local, the local, the local doctor says that they almost seem like they had been drained of a lot of blood. Um, but they didn't have any weapon wounds or anything on them. And uh, it's that particular detail that makes this local magistrate very, very nervous, which is why he has put up the bounty you know, posting that you guys responded to, right? Like, oh, you know, adventurers wanted. Because <clears throat> um, the magistrate tells you, he says, he tells you, um, 
he tells you this. He's like, two, this has happened to two different families over the course of like, I don't know, uh, like in the last month. This has happened twice. Um, you know, one time was weird. Second time is an alarm bell. <laughs> um, he says, um, he says there's a local legend um there's a there's a keep out in the forest um and it was it was built by um by count gaspar radovan and he built it kind of far away from town because he fell in love with this beautiful woman named jasna and uh and he wanted he he just worshipped her. He thought she was the most beautiful woman on the you know in the world. And he built he built this this keep to you know be like kind of like a shrine to her and you know and all her beauty and all you know all his love for her. And all the local legend is is that one day. Jasna came into town completely covered in blood, carrying a child with her that had demonic features, uh, which caused the town people to panic. Uh, they chased her out of town back to the keep, uh, and they sealed the keep up. They brought all the masons and they literally bricked up every door and window <laughs> from the outside. Um, never to uh, hear from them again. Now, he says, that's the kind of the history of it. Which is some part history, some part like local folklore. He's like, from there it gets weirder because you know folklore happens. Some people say Jasna's a ghost who haunts the forest and you know kidnaps children. Uh, some people say she's like turned into a vampire and and you know uh, haunts those uh, you know occasionally preys on people. And you know this magistrate, he's like, he's like, you know, I've always written that off as just fairy tales, but these two recent incidences have me very concerned because they have very much evoked in him the memory of this of this terrible story. He's like, it might be nothing. He's like, you might go out to the keep and there might be just an empty keep. <laughs> Perhaps with, you know, God knows, maybe a couple of skeletons inside. He's like, but for my peace of mind, <laughs> I would really appreciate it. <laughs> If you went and you checked out this key. Um, um, and, and did these events happen like generations ago? Like, would there be anybody still living in the town that would have would have seen uh, Jasna? Or, or is this like something that has uh, been really remote in the past? Oh, that's a good question. Um... No, I think it happened within. I think I think this probably has this this probably happened within within one generation. There's like I think there is maybe some older townspeople who may have been there. Yes. Yeah. Well, we ought to talk to them. Yeah. Do you want? Okay. You want to? You want to? You want? You want to like find someone who's there? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to Rob to Robbie's point, if we can get any intel. Sure. No, I mean, inevitably, you know, we'll find three people, all of whom tell such a totally different story that we'll just have to rush them on that thing together. But yeah. you know, that's, a, that's I mean, all right, right? Maybe there's some yeah. truth in it, right? Yeah. Um, we broke the GM. No, 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 that's fine. I'm just trying to figure out, like, like if you if you want to spend some time, yeah, that's fine. You can go find some some somebody who is there. They do kind of cooperate the history of the magistrate. They tell you that they, they're like, oh yeah, I remember that day, you know, that Jasna wandered into town. Um, they kind of add that she did seem 
that one person does remember that that it kind of felt a little bit like the town overreacted. Um, yes, she did have a lot of blood on her, and yes, she was carrying you know this weird looking baby, but she wasn't particularly threatening or anything like that. She, in fact, that was part of what was so that was what was so disconcerting was that she was she. It's like she'd come into town to go shopping, um, and and she was just very casually like. Just going around and being like, "Look, my baby was born. You know, uh, I need to buy some, you know, you know, bread and 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 everything like that." Like it took a while for the, like the town didn't just see her and freak out. Like she was there for a while, and then people were like not knowing what to do because like here's this. She's like, I, I remember that child. He had like little budding horns, and and there was there was you know he, he was an unnatural color, and his eyes were black, and uh, you know and. And, and he had sharp teeth, uh, you know. But but Jasna was just treating him like 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 she was the he was the pie in her eye, you know. Uh, and she just like uh, nobody knew what to do. They just froze. Uh, it's just, but eventually, you know, people just began to panic. And you know what happens when people panic? Uh, I, Jasna didn't even seem to understand why people were afraid, and, and 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 you know, yeah, they ran her out of town, and and they just, you know, they they barely even said two words to her before you know the the magistrate at that time was was calling for for masons and bricklayers <laughs> to, to 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 think you know hide this this curse away, as, as some were saying. So when Sarah hears the word unnatural. Her forehead kind of wrinkles because she's half elf and she's heard herself be called unnatural before. Um, and she says, when "You say unnatural. You mean you just haven't seen it before? You're scared of it. It's different." Well, you're a holy woman. Do you know the devil when you see it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Minerva teaches that knowledge is important, and we should seek knowledge, even if we're afraid of what we find. I'm not saying that what we all did that day was right, but I can tell you we were all terrified. Hmm, okay. So I would be curious to uh, check out the side of the most recent um, situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Um, especially, it sounds like maybe there wasn't a lot of material evidence of what happened, but uh, I mm -hmm. have some skill in auras, and I wonder if I can, you know, sort of plop myself down and uh, meditate a little bit and get a sense of, uh, you know, what might have been there and what happened. Okay, so you want to go to the to the thing. All right, two things. There's one. There there is like a servant there who's like kind of uh, taking care of things. So if you want to talk to them, but you want to do kind of like a like like you want to like meditate and like see if you can get a, a read on the place, right? It sounds supernatural. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, why don't you make a roll for that? Oh All no, right. go go ahead and make an auras roll. So I need one d10. Or two or three, your choice. Or two or three. I, I, yeah. I think this is not a critical situation okay. yet. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just okay. going to try one. Okay. Uh, and I got a plus one bonus, right? So I got a yep. good 80% uh, chance of something. Yep. Because you're trying to roll over three. Awesome. Good stuff. You can really roll a one. Okay. <laughs> good stuff. Well, your, stress goes, your stress goes up by one. <laughs> yeah, I do feel stressed. Absolutely. As, you, oh as, you, as you're sitting there, as your stress goes up by one, you literally you feel as if like you are you are being bit by a hundred tiny mouths. Like that is literally like you just you are in darkness, and all of a sudden it feels like like a hundred little tiny mouths are biting into your flesh. As you, as, as you, and then like, you just like instantly wait, like before, like any more can come to you, you just like instantly wake up <laughs> from your, so, from your, like you barely close your eyes when you have this incredible experience and then just like instantly like wake up. So this was a, a full failure. Does, am yeah. I aware that I've 
failed and like that this thing is probably just a meaningless hallucination that's adding to my stress or is there perhaps some, it, well it may not it may not even knowledge? be like it may not even be um failure is not necessarily like especially for something that's information it's not necessarily like I'm not going to completely say like this is nonsense, right? But it's like you just don't get any more other than this thing that stresses you out and is like you know horrified, right? Um, but that's the that's the experience you have is like being bitten by a hundred tiny mouths. All right. Yeah, and before you just like are instant, like you barely close your eyes, and like a second later, you're like ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my experience with the dice. That was that was my feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. Jesse has a has a mechanical question. Does yeah. the cleric heal stress or doom? Uh, or it, either. Uh, <laughs> uh, it would actually be neither of those things. Okay. What it would be is if you take injury. That's why there's like an injury list. Injuries are actually descriptive. Ah. You could get rid of those. Cool. Like that's yeah, yeah. But well, you uh, said, yeah. Robbie, go. Yeah. You said that there was a servant there. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think it it would be worth uh, asking the servant. Uh, you know, I, I I I look at our dear paladin, who that avenue doesn't seem to interest me very much to to try to divine auras. But like the servant sitting here, uh, you know, I I think Marlo would be you know wanting to know. What 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 the servant knows, uh, and, and sure. you know, was the servant around when this happened, or you know? Yeah, well, th these the way the, like this is still sort of like a very like the wealthy people here do not necessarily have like uh, like like it's it's not a very opulent area, so even the wealthy here don't necessarily have like live-in servants, but this is somebody who would come every day, right? Like. They have their own little cottage or whatever that they uh -huh. live in, but they come every day and everything. So they were around during the day, but not at night when the when when, when this happened. In fact, they were the ones that came that day and found like the door open and like all these other things. They said they say to you, you know, at first they're very nervous and everything, and and it takes a little while to get them to kind of come around and trust you. But eventually they say, All right, there was something very odd. And and I've been afraid to speak of it. Um, she said, uh, a little while before this happened, um, a, uh, uh, a child was left on the doorstep of the house and, uh, and, and the, the mistress of the house, um, uh, took the child in, but then the strangest thing happened. Um, the the child appeared to be aging at an unnatural rate. Um, uh, the mistress wanted to go to the local like wise woman or something for advice, but the master of the house wouldn't hear of it. He he he, you know, uh, they, they it unfortunately caused them to to argue a lot. Um, over a cup over about a two week period about what to do with this mysterious child that appeared to be aging rapidly. Um, and, uh, you know, and all of us were told to care for it and that the, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with the child other than how quickly they aged. Um, uh, and then the morning I came in, uh, you know, I found the family and I, and I searched the whole house, but that, child was gone. They weren't here anymore. And, and I just thought it best not to speak of such strange things, you know, in case, I don't know, whatever curse befell this house would befall me. And, and when you say it aged, I mean, like, did it grow uh, at, at some unusual pace or did it just look like its features were getting an, an oh no! Mature or no? It, when it was it, it when we found the child on the doorstep, it wasn't like in like it wasn't like a complete baby, like an old you know bassinet. It was actually kind of more like a like a small toddler. We just kind of found you know wandering around mm -hmm. outside. But it was uh, you know uh, a week later. It, it, it's like it's like it had grown like a full year. It was more like a three or four year old. Yeah, and then a week it after that, it was nearly five or six. And did it did its mental faculties also 
seem to progress or did it seem to like stay? Yeah, he was a very sweet, bright child. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we could only teach it so fast. I mean, information is still information, but mm -hmm. he went from barely saying two words to full sentences. <laughs> So then the, the bodies, uh, I wonder if we could look at those and, um, uh, you know. If well, they've already that. been buried. Oh. Yeah. If you want to go dig them up, you can do Maybe that. you could go aura the <laughs> graveyard. I could do that. I mean, <clears throat> I. You're not going to roll a single one again. Oh, don't, don't say that. No, because you're going <laughs> to <roll. laughs> See, that's uh, why, that's. That's, this is also why rolling one die is overconfident as well. It's like, oh, my target number is three. I'm not going <laughs> to. Yeah. I think that while, while Tim is going out to the graveyard uh, <laughs> to aura it, um, I, I think I will do exactly the same thing that he did with that sort of supernatural perspective. Yeah. But instead of it being the supernatural perspective, it's kind of your, your, uh, uh, you know, bread and butter sort of detect magic, discern, discern magical uh, uh, warp traces kind of thing. You know, is there a is there evidence of the use of of uh, particular kinds of magic in and around this house, and do they perhaps? suggest a directionality or a, you know something like that sure all you right know, it's the it's the star trek uh you know i'm trying to find a you know a a, a, a resonance trace from their warp core kind sure of, got it you know. got it okay yeah i notice over you do have a some skill in investigation uh cool yeah yeah, I mean, it seems like that, 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 that. Well, I can, you can do one of two things. You can, I mean, they're the same rank, so it doesn't matter. But you could, you could either roll it as, you know, an investigation roll that you're just augmenting colorfully with magic, or you could make a spells roll because you're actually casting a spell, like whatever you, that actually might, that actually also might color my outcome. So which is it? Is it more like you are investigating and you're just using your magical sight in order to make these connections? Or are you actually like casting, like detect magic to like, like what is what what is the emphasis here? Is the emphasis the investigation or the spell? I'm category? gonna I'm gonna start with investigate, and if it turns okay. something that the magic would, I think, improve or augment, then I'll I'll make that roll after. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation roll. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna throw two dice. Okay. Okay, so your highest, don't look at the total, your highest is an eight yep. plus the one for investigation. So that gets you to nine. Um, okay, so that is that is technically, yeah, yeah. That, so that, but no ones, so your stress doesn't go up. Um, cool, so that counts as like, that's like basically a partial success because you didn't quite make 10. Hey, Jesse, um, is there like yeah. a uh, an aid mechanic in this game where one of us could help mm -hmm. or go get up to that? Like no, out. not not really. No. Okay. Um, the um, yeah. Given that we only have uh, the you know very very limited pluses, having to roll the having to roll a nine or a ten on a ten sided die uh, okay. to be successful is mechanically pretty hardcore. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, strain is strain is kind of like that. I mean, I can even double, double, double yeah, plus you especially, but is below ten. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so, um, yeah, the game sort of builds momentum. Um, so, so here's here's the thing. You you basically what it is is that you kind of went out sort of looking for supernatural things. Um. But as you're looking around, and this is this is sort of like the complication, you realize that there's actually a much bigger mortal component to this. Because remember I told you these houses were robbed, right? 
as you're investigating, quote, looking for supernatural things, you actually find the opposite. You find e evidence of multiple people having been here to take everything. You find different sized footprints. You find, you know, areas that clearly, like, you know, have been have been searched through and, you know, ransacked or, or whatever. And you realize that given the time and effort plus what you see here, multiple people had to have come in the middle of the night in order to steal all this stuff. Huh. So it's like these people were exsanguinated and then uh, a veritable army of movers came in and denuded this home of all of its stuff. Yep. That's exactly what it looks like. Huh. That's weird. <laughs> um, I wonder if, um, uh, you know, a, a, a spell sort of like a, uh, uh, that, that, that might, that might allow me to see the, the, uh, you know, the images of people who have been in this house in sure. 12 hours kind of thing might reveal some uh, some additional useful knowledge. So I'll try something like that. Sure. Go ahead and, and, and make a spell roll. I think I'll make a... a, a is this uh, perhaps the sort of thing where... Uh, uh, the spell book would be an augmentation to this role? Yes, absolutely. So you can add you can add one for the spell book and one for the spells. Okay. The spell book is listed as being ranked two. Yeah. So here's here's this is where things are a little confusing with strain. Um, if you are using an item to augment a specialty, the item just adds plus one. If you are using an item in your dead, Yeah. What? Oh there's yeah. Your Rhyme. Yeah, technically, if you have an item, you could say, here, use this or whatever. That's a good point. Um, if you are using the item because you don't have a specialty, like it's the only thing helping you, you can add the item's rank. Got it. All right, so I'm going to roll two and add two. Yes. Eight. There you, there you go. Oh, you got an eight. But you still didn't roll any one, so that's good. Um, okay. Okay. So first you hear a voice, you hear a man's voice. Um, and the man says, the man says, uh, uh, he points and he says, he says, all right, make sure to take that and divvy up everything into two piles. Two piles is what, Two, pile one is what we're taking for ourselves. Pile two is what we're donating. You know how it works, boys. He's like, he's like, I want silverware. I want tea sets. I want everything. You see multiple people and other things. It says, and don't hurt the child. Bring the child to me. We're taking that one back. We're taking and then you, that one back. And, it, and then you hear, and then you hear another voice be like, are you sure this is the same child? I thought they were younger than this. He's like, yes, it's the same child, I assure you. He's like, and then like, and, and like while you're having this vision of all these people sort of looting the house and everything, and this is this is your partial success, he looks right at you. Oh dear. And you suddenly realize your vision may be two-way. Oh dear. <laughs> That's that's unnerving. <clears throat> like you can tell that he's got this inclining that he's being watched. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm I'm seven hours ahead of him. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like he still has this feeling that like <clears throat> he's been seen. Yeah. <laughs> I will uh, 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 sort of make a uh, make a report to my my colleagues, uh, that, 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 that this was not some uh, uh, sort of half-witted, half clueless kind of hack job here. This was 
finely tuned, orchestrated, and uh, and clearly planned by people who had not only a wealth agenda but also a recover the kid agenda. So that's a that's my report. So I wonder if there's a, a fence in town or nearby, and we could uh, see if they've done anything with these goods and maybe uh, get some more identity information from that. That's a good idea. Huh. That's an interesting idea. OK. Um, one of you is a one of you is playing the rogue. Yeah, uh, that's me. Well, yeah. oh, you know the fence. You, you know the fence. I won't even make you. I want to. If you hadn't had the road, somebody probably would have had to like, in, like, make a roll to find it. But you know, you're you, you got you got ins, right? Yeah, you 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 know how to ask around and, and you know like, and figure out like where they would yeah. Uh, unload. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds good. Um. Now, now um. Tom is it Tomarzo? Uh, did did you want to go? Are you're going out to the graveyard to? You know, oh, I, I think that's an that option, here. but. That sounds like digging a hole is going to take a lot of time and be a lot of effort. And uh, honestly, this uh, new information from uh, Ovid, I think, is a, a better option. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm open to doing it if you guys feel it's important. But uh, I, I vote we go to the fence. And I got some charisma and perfume. You know, maybe we can squeeze something out. Do it, baby. Do it. <laughs> um, that, so that's a good question. Is... Uh... Well, let, me, let me go back to you. Uh, like the so Marlo, like you know the guy, but is the idea is you might want to have uh, Tomarzo do the approach, or do you want to go in and be like, "Hey, long time no see, buddy." <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah I, that was crossing my mind of of like I don't know if the the fence. Will you know? I, I come walking in with a paladin. You know the reputation of paladins, <laughs> so far, though, you know. Uh, Self righteous do gooders. <laughs> well, it all depends on you know our uh, ethical orient and then exactly what we're a paladin of, of course. I am Tomarzo, the paladin of chaos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lawfully bring chaos unto you. That's right. <laughs> Well, I will say that I am the paladin of art, which is why I have this perfume and sealing wax with me, as I like to smell good and make other things smell good. And then, you know, the wax is for um, occasional bits of uh, holy sculpture, mm -hmm. if that's not perhaps too random. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's not too random, Tim. <laughs> that's, that's precisely the right amount of random. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So yes, you you know Marlo's like oh yeah I know I, I know a guy who knows a guy right like <laughs> uh, so how are yeah how are you approaching this guy are you like going to like I guess the local tavern or whatever where you know like he's always got the back table and <laughs> yeah uh, yeah yeah I, I I think you know Marlo does have his yeah he head uh, filled with like some some such kind of. Uh, you know, back alley or 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 you know, dark corner of the tavern type uh, mm -hmm. meeting. Okay, and you're approaching him, right, Marlon? Yeah. I mean, is it is it both of us that would be? You can you both know better than I do. Yeah. I think yeah. I could help, but you know, I shall defer to you on this. Uh. <clears throat> <clears throat> if you're both if you both are walking up to him, he uh this 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 fence I'll take off as he goes by uh Farley. Uh Farley looks up at you, Marlo, and then looks over at Tomarzo and is like, Gee Marlo, you're running with strange company these days. Yeah, um, but you know, I'm I'm uh I, I don't really have prejudices. Uh, you know, uh you know, I, I I like to I find it useful to uh, kind of hang out with different types. You know, widens my experience, widens my knowledge of things that are happening. Um, but uh, 
I, I we have a few questions we wanted to ask you, and and I want to just preface all of this by saying, um, we're not really interested in in going after anybody in in the town, right? We, we're we're not. Uh, we we've been asked to investigate the keep, and we've been led to believe that, well. It, some people suspect that what's been happening with those wealthy families may be tied up to these legends of the keep and they want us to kind of look at the keep. So that that's kind of what what we are ultimately uh, interested in. But we did find out that the wealthy families that um, th they were kind of cleared out, uh, that they they had, you know, everything kind of stripped from the the walls, from the floor, and there, there was a lot of property that moved. <laughs> um, and I'd be kind of curious to know if, if you know anything about kind of property that's been moving around and who, who might have been involved in that. He says, well, he says, I'm a reasonable man. He says, I'll make a deal with you. He says, you really going to go into that haunted old place? Yeah, that that's, uh, we've been asked to do that. So we're, we're going to, uh, you know, I don't know what kind of truth we hold into those old legends. But yeah, yeah, I think we're going to poke around in that, in that old keep, open it up and see what's inside. They say Count Radigan was quite a wealthy man. I'll make a deal with you. Whatever you go in there, if you go in there, you promise to bring me the most valuable thing you find. I'll give you the information you want. That uh, that seems like a fair exchange to me. And and by valuable, are you are you looking for value in terms of something that you could I nudge move? you in the side? And I'm like, um, well, that sounds like a cool deal. And I want to just uh, point out that you know, while you may work on the uh, shady side of things, you don't have to look like that. Remember, the clothes make the man. I'm just gonna pull out my perfume and uh, spritz him a little bit and say. Uh, the blessings of art upon you. Surely this shall attract uh, more beauteous rewards in the future. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> he, says, he says yes. He says there should be some incredibly valuable antiques in there by now. He says, it's a man named Tristan. Oh, yeah. It's always trouble. An, <laughs> he says, Tristan always comes to me with stuff he wants to offload. He's a strange man, though. After I take my cut, he only takes maybe half. He then tells me to distribute whatever's left over, you know, to charities, churches, homeless people, that kind of thing. He says, Tristan's, Tristan moves around a lot. I haven't, normally, I haven't seen him in a long time. He recently showed up, but the halls he's been coming back with lately, like, I don't know where he's getting them. Are you telling me he's responsible for those those entire house strip jobs? I mean, that would make sense with, with, the, with, the, with the amount of stuff, but I, I just didn't think Tristan had the manpower for that <laughs> yeah um it, it they we've been up to one of those houses and you're right i mean he must have like a, a veritable uh moving company uh kind of working for him to pull pull all that stuff out sounds like a, a strange kind of robin hood type like so you know i may, maybe maybe he soothes his conscience by uh by you know justifies what what he's doing by this idea that uh you know some of it's going to go to charity 
Yeah, Tristan has give to the poor. Tr Tristan is very focused on uh, taking only what you can use. Is his little phrase that he likes to throw around. Is, is Tristan a violent type? Oh, I mean, he's he's. I mean, he's, I, I tend not to ask questions, you know, <laughs> too, too many questions, but I mean, eh, you know, he's, uh, he, there's been a couple of highway jobs that gone wrong, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're done here. <laughs> the whole family, the whole, like, like, <laughs> like, like, it's not just, like, <laughs> we are talking about family annihilation situations here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tristan, I mean, he says, he says, Tristan is not above, you know, you know, uh, slit the throat here and there. Like, all right. Well, um, that that's useful uh and i certainly will be keeping my eye out uh when we when we go into the keep i'll 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 keep a special eye out uh for a, a prime object uh to bring back to you uh, i appreciate that out, i'm going to pull out my sword and i'm going to carve a uh, attractive geometric pattern into the tabletop in front of him as my gift um and so so I'm going to use my um, my sword skills to do that. Uh, okay, I mean you don't need to roll for that. Like you can just do that. Like yeah. Are you yeah. sure? Really? Yeah. Well, okay. I, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, you just carve like you're just carving the thing into the table, right? Sure. Why not? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Great. one thing I want. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. He kind of looks down at the strange scroll work and he looks at you. He again turns to Barlow and says, You really are running with some weird company these days. Yeah, well, you know, what what, what do I what what can I say? You know, you know, when, when you're gonna go into these old keeps, you know, I, I figure somebody with a sword is, you know, probably a useful useful guy to have around, but uh, I, I can't vouch for his social graces. Mm. Paladins are cut from a particular cloth. <laughs> yes. Don't worry, I'm sure we're going to find you a lovely gravy boat in that in that in that creepy old house. <laughs> That's exactly what he's hoping you do. <laughs> All right. What do you want to do next? So we have a name, but we don't have any locations still. I mean, we could just like canvas the town, you know, ask if anybody knows Tristan. We could put up posters. We could go to this. Well, well, Marlo, place. Marlo tells you that 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 Tristan, like, basically, he doesn't really he moves around the area, right? And he doesn't he doesn't really like he's he's more of a he's more of a remote site kind of person. Like he, yeah. like he doesn't he doesn't just like come into town. Like he comes into town to do business, but he's always like. Lives Moving in the woods, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Like he doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So he's well known, you know, in in the town. Well, I, well, I not no, no. Yeah. Mar I mean, Farley knows him. Like the town does it. Like the town right. people might have like heard of this. Like, oh yeah, there's this legendary bandit or whatever. But like, most people don't really like. Yeah. He's he's probably just yeah known known among the the shady types in town that would be dealing in stolen property. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Were there enough people that like we could follow the tracks somewhere? I mean, there's roads probably that people use. How long ago did this thing happen? Is it days or weeks or what? It's been about a week since the second one happened. Yeah. I mean, look, the, the way that the way that the scene of what I observed um, was described uh, un unless someone c cleared their tracks or there was a torrential thunderstorm 
there'd probably still be evidence of that many people schlepping this stuff out sure out out, out, out yeah. of town okay so you want to you want to you want me to try it again to see if i can sort sure. of the, the pathway kind yeah of? yeah i'm doing okay on two dice so i'll try two again okay i so I, I keep the one but i get an eight is that right yeah you get an eight but your stress goes up by one keep the one okay yeah yeah your stress goes up by one and you get an eight yeah okay Um, yeah, so, um, you follow the tracks, you know, out into the woods and they go for a really long time like you you follow them like you're starting to like get like miles away from town oh wow okay yeah but i mean it's really clear like nobody bothered to like hide anything or anything okay. like that um and in fact uh you um you do in fact come across this keep oh okay um and uh you can see where like the front door would be but it's like it's like bricked up um and uh you here's here's kind of here's where the partial success is the 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 key the grounds around the keep themselves um have a lot like evidence of like a lot of traffic so the specific thing that you're trailing um you lose track of right around this keep so you don't see like where they like may have gone in relation to the keep like but the tracks definitely lead here and you do see kind of what you've been described you see this keep but every window like where there should be windows and doors you see brick got it yeah okay I'll return to town and communicate this to my uh, distinguished colleagues. Uh, so, so your 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 mage, um, who's Ovid, comes back um, and says, uh, "You know these these tracks they def they lead out to that keep the magistrate you know described to us." Yeah, there's no question the magistrate got it right. So I think we probably we we probably ought to pop out there. You know, as soon as. As soon as we feel like we know what we need to know from, uh, I brought my familiar along. Um, <laughs> uh, as soon as we feel like we've got a we've got a read of the town, um, we ought to head out now. This this place looks totally abandoned, and we're probably going to need some kind of mage door activities to get in there because everything's all bricked up. It's not even boarded up; it's bricked up. So yeah, unless any of y'all got masonry skills i mean grappling yeah. hooks or but i mean there's all those people yeah. like doing stuff they've got to be getting yeah. in somehow too yeah so yeah I, I, yeah I, I did yeah so so ovid uh, just to be clear i kind of in my mind had you like go out there kind of see like oh this is the keep and come back like not actually do like any like reconning of the oh, is that fine no. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm simply yeah. describing what I saw. Right, yeah, okay. It might be a bulkhead or yeah, a ladder or whatever is yeah. is separate from yeah from my yeah. description of what we're seeing. Because yeah. right. I assumed you kind of got in sight line, but realized the tracks were too confused from that point, and then just like went, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. okay. 100%. All right. Well, I noticed Marlo has uh, iron spikes and hammer and rope and, you know, maybe could like, well, I guess that you can't really open the doors because there aren't doors to open. So, okay, never mind. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, before we head out, uh, Jesse, I know you mentioned that, like, for healing stress, there was, we had the, this dice rolling mechanic. But if we do it in town, is it less stressful to 
rest. Yeah, I was gonna say if you if you just want to like spend the night, you can reset your stress um, because you're in a place of safety and like let's head out tomorrow and you know if, really? if, if that if that is what you would like to do, you know you're, let's do you're it. welcome. Like, you're welcome to do that. Okay. Well, that's my vote. So then I can go down to three stress again. Yeah, go ahead and recover your stress because you choose to like let's let's wait till tomorrow to to worry about this. Yeah. Would mine also drop as a result of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody who's taking stress, you can go ahead and you can go ahead and lower your stress <clears throat> uh, just from spending the night in town in a place of safety. And uh, yeah. Okay. You're muted. Right? So any, I was going to say at night, I think one thing Marlo would be interested in, in doing uh -huh. would be to go. I, I'm kind of curious about Farley giving, you know, money to charity. And I was like thinking maybe it would be worth taking a quick little uh, jog uh, in a part of town where, there would be people who were more destitute and, and uh -huh. just kind of like, you know, not, not being really aggressive with the prying, but, but, you know, to say, you know, how, you know, just try to get a sense of how, how the more down and out in town have been faring recently. And, you know, maybe mention that I, you know, I've, I've heard that, that things may be looking up a little bit that, that like there have been, you know, Kind of some some you know good uh, you know ch charitable types who who seem to have uh, taken a, a an, an interest in in the you know those who are having a hard time in the town and uh, kind of showing some showing some love. Uh, yeah, no, you absolutely confirm Farley's story that there has been sort of a mysterious benefactor that lately you know that. You know, some money has just been handed out to some people who are super destitute. Uh, some uh, there's like a local like there's like a local church there that that tends to them and says that yes, a very recent generous donation um, arrived. Uh, uh, and I think maybe even like when you were back when you were talking about Farley, like you definitely got the impression that like Farley wouldn't double cross Tristan because that would be bad. Like Tristan would know if Farley wasn't following those instructions, and then like. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like Farley isn't stupid. Like Farley doesn't like, like he thinks, sure, he's crazy. Like, why would, you know, he's a bandit. He's a criminal. Why would you do this? But like, he knows that if he didn't follow Tristan's instructions, Tristan would find out and then like Farley would be in deep trouble. So yeah, you absolutely confirm that. Yeah. Like there just, there has been an influx in, in either donations or, you know, direct, uh, you know, direct need giving or whatever to, to people in sort of the poorer side of town. Yeah, and and you know, with that information, yeah, I, I'd bring that back to the to the group, uh, kind of let let them know that I've I've checked it out, and it seems like it is in fact the case that whoever is, uh, or at least one of the people who's clearing out these uh, these houses is in fact, uh, yeah, spreading some love. Yeah, and and, and to speak to kind of Ryan, Ryan's point, like these these are the wealthy people in town, but they are not like opulently wealthy. I mean. You know, relatively, I mean, these are, these are like, you know, well-to-do, like, merchant types, right? But these are not, like, lords, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> you know, these people don't have personal guards and militias, right? They're just, right. like, sort of the wealthiest merchants in town, which is, you know, compared to poverty, you know, excessive. But, but these are not, yeah. <laughs> All right, and, and before I leave yeah. the end, I would like to be a jerk again. Um, I'm going to wake up early, and I'm going to use my sword to carve my holy symbol on the inside of the room door so as to leave <laughs> an artistic blessing for any future um, people who visit. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. May I, like may I roll to do that to leave a, an artistic blessing? You don't, you don't have to roll. You just do it. I know, but I, but I, want, I want a chance to get a rank two thing. Or, or oh yeah, no, it has to be. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to be doing it like towards a goal, right? So, so yeah, don't. Yeah, 
you just you just carve the you just there ha- yeah there has to be some risk involved. There really I isn't want any future risk involved. people who stay in that room to to feel inspired when they wake up in the morning, whether they are, <laughs> you know, um, okay, you know, spinning thread yeah. or you know writing a book or whatever. Yeah. You know, when you do that to ward off a room from an impending threat, then we'll have you roll. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You, uh, because uh, I like where you're going with that, but yeah, there has, has to be some sort of risk or danger involved. All right, so where are you? What are you? What are you doing now? I, I believe we are all going out to the keep. Okay, yeah. you are all going out. Okay, so you you gear up, you 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 head out to the keep, and yeah, exactly like I described to Ovid, you find this. Just keep it again. You sort of approach it from a you know an initial distance, and you can, from what you can tell, see you know where doors and windows might be, but they're they're bricked up at least at this distance. Uh, how do you like? What do you do? How do you approach? I mean, I, I think uh, Marlo uh, he knows about casing a joint, so okay. I, I think Marlo will. Uh, you know, say I. I think we should we should do a a, a sweep around the perimeter first. Sure. Kind of get a get a complete three hundred and sixty view of this place, and kind of take note of of any possible points of entry, and also see if you know looking around for tracks and such. If if it seems like there's a place where people you know have been moving into the keep. Uh, yeah. Well, as you said. Marlo, you're you know you're you're used to casing places. You're skilled at this, so you uh, you go you go around. Are you going by yourself? You're taking the whole group. Like, what's the what's the like? Do you just do like a once around and have everybody wait? Do you bring everybody with you? I I, I mean I I think I'd be inclined to just kind of you know, I mean I I know what I'm doing. Hell, is it okay? What? I said that this this keep isn't a Las Vegas hotel. It doesn't take him thirty five minutes to to walk the perimeter, right? Probably not. Yeah, you probably wait for him, like you know, just to have him go around the around the keep, right? Yeah, yeah sure. Because splitting okay. up is such a good idea. <laughs> well, I mean, most of the time he's going to be in sight line until he goes, you know, around the back, and then yeah, you know, which the is yeah, that's right. We yeah. understand. And then I'll, you can wait ten minutes, and if he doesn't come back <laughs> around the other side, you know something's happened, right? Yeah, um, I'll yell real yeah. loud if I if yeah. I'm. Uh, experiencing yeah, trouble. I mean, I mean this 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 was a home, right? So it's not yeah. <laughs> right. This this is this is not a military garrison, nor nor was it a you know huge castle. It's just a small like. Right. right. Um, okay, so yeah, you go, Marlo. You you, you take a nice three hundred and sixty stroll, and you know you know what you're looking for. Um, so first of all, like just looking over it, there are places that are still very solidly bricked up. Really, like with iron spikes and your hammer enough time, you could probably pry open any of the entrances you see. But that would take time and effort, which you're certainly welcome to do. Um, but three things stick out at you. First of all, the brickwork on the front door, over the front door, is very damaged. Um, you suspect that probably over the years, like various people have maybe tried to like break into this place or whatever and then given up or whatever. Like the the bricking over the front door is in fact fairly weak. It would probably be less effort to just excavate the front door. You it would be effort, but you could do it. Um uh around one side uh of the keep, you see that like it, it must have been there forever. You see a ladder up to a second-story veranda. Um, it's a little difficult from the ground to see w- what the brickwork around the entrances up there are, but, I mean, vines have grown all over this thing, so there's lots of places where things up here crack. In fact, vines are wrapped all around. You bear, Like, the ladder from a distance, you wouldn't even see it. It's so covered in, in vines, but because you know what you're looking for, you say, oh, wait, there's an old ladder that's still, that's all vine-covered going up to this, like, second-story veranda. And the third thing you spot is basically in the very, very back, um, and you're still from a kind of a distance because you don't like don't want to be seen. Um, but you do notice a very small section of brickwork uh, 
that's probably over a window based on height and location. It's because it's not doesn't go to the ground all the way. You see a a small section of brickwork that appears to have been more carefully removed. And in fact, you see like the like bricks like piled up kind of like on the ground. And there's basically just enough for sort of a crawl space worth of brickwork that's been removed over again, what you estimate is probably a window, but you're pretty far away to like completely tell. So those are the those are the things that just doing a you know a casual casing around, those are the things that stick out at you. Yeah. So I mean when I get back, I would just, you know, let them know what I what I found. But you know what what uh, what most catches my eye is that is that ladder and uh, and also the little crawl space. Um, I, I don't think that the front door is necessarily I mean, I think we could get in there, but that that seems uh, we'd be making a lot of noise and uh, attracting notice, which as a rogue is not really what I'm into. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really my jam. <laughs> no. uh, my um, my my uh, uh, my inclination would be to um, perhaps see if the ladder might afford us entry into the uppermost part of this and then sort of just sort of spiral down right um that would be that would be my my inclination okay um but i'll defer because i don't feel it all that strongly but why be why be uh haphazard when you can be systemic systematic right i'm in Let's do the ladder. Team ladder. Okay. Team All ladder. Right. Cool. Who's okay, so that's on like I said, one side of the keep. Who yeah. who is going up the ladder first? Well, I, I think I would want to ask Marlo if uh you know, to use that sort of rogue vision. Look at the top, the ladder, does it go into uh, you know, is it is there an open is there an open space? Is there a is there a nothing? There's a, oh, nowhere. There's a, there's a veranda up there. Who's the, ver the veranda? My, my yeah. Veranda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, um, Marlo probably ought to go first, right? Or I can make a, uh, I can make some kind of a floating disc and, <laughs> and uh, or levitate us up. I yeah, that's true. Us. You, yeah, you I, could I, avoid the ladder and and use magic to get people up there. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I have armor. If somebody wants to be whacked, you know, I can, I can take one, maybe. I don't. I don't know if this will. Well, while all of these, uh, while my my party is debating about uh, how they're going to get in here, I think I'm just going to say a quiet prayer to Minerva uh, and ask for guidance as to which of these paths is the safest in. Ooh. Okay. Uh, sure. now Ryan gets to roll some dice. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and go ahead and pray for guidance. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and do three here. Why not? So three tens. I think there's already three in there. So let's roll that. Wow. There you go. <laughs> and no ones. All right. Uh, oh, actually, wait a minute. You rolled a ten. Mm -hmm. You have no ones. That is a critical success, yeah. which means that you may write a rank two prayer that has something to do with divination, guidance, right? It has to be relevant to what you rolled. So, yeah. I like guidance. Yeah. Guidance. Mm. All right. So you have a rank two guidance under prayer. Um, yeah, critical success. Okay. Um. So when you meditate upon the front door, right, you have, uh, your body is covered with a sense of great exhaustion and a sense of foreboding or dread, but not danger, just severe unease. When you meditate upon the hole in the back, 
you kind of are of like two visions. One is uh, either uh, great violent conflict or maybe a really intense argument, but definitely a, a, a struggle of some kind, but the nature of the struggle, whether it be physical or socially, you're unsure, but definite, definitely strife and conflict when you, when you meditate upon that. Um, when you think about the ladder, and, and, and just simply climbing the ladder, you have, uh, you are beset by a great sense of falling. Clear <laughs> 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 of all revisions. Um, all right, I'll relay this to the party. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm no longer on team ladder. <laughs> are you on team? Well, your wizard, you're... Your wizard offered to fly you up there. <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll. I'll make a. I'll make a levitate to the veranda. Okay. Bro. Okay. Yeah. If if you want to still go that way, your wizard has offered. Right. This was literally just thinking about climbing the ladder gave you a sense of fall. Right. right? If you if you know your wizard's like, well, I could levitate you. I'm not gonna drop you. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't make my vision come true. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So now, given the vision information, do you want to reassess your sense of entry, or do you want to have the wizard levitate you, or some other? Yeah. I, I will trust John to be levitated. If you want the person with the most armor going first, I can do that. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Jesse, do you want me to roll for each person or just a general roll? No, you can just one roll to levitate everybody up there. I'll do a, I'll do a two for again. Okay. That's a nine. That's a nine. Awesome. Okay. Uh. Cool. Let me look at. Uh, so you levitate everybody up there. Um, you didn't roll any ones, right? Yeah, no ones. Negative. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, so here's 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 the here's the slight complication. Um, uh, Marlo, the the rogue, who's much more comfortable with you know climbing shit. Um, than being levitated, uh, isn't quite used to holding this stuff. Uh, as you're as you're being levitated up, your lantern slips from you and falls to the ground and breaks. Oh, Curse it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I told you I sensed something falling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Minerva's vision comes true, but not quite in the way that was uh that was expected. Yeah, your uh, your main light source uh, is damaged. Okay. When you when you but when you reach the top. Okay. Yeah, but you're on a veranda, and now that you're up here, you can see um. There there are there are windows uh, along the way that are clearly bricked up, but basically at either end where you kind of again with your sort of like I know building sense, Marlo. You think that there would probably be doors at either end of this veranda. Um, you can see that again, vines and whatever has severely damaged the brickwork at either end. Um, uh, so again, similar to the front door, it would there would probably be some effort, but you could probably excavate either of those doors easily, or maybe the windows, but those th that that brickwork is much more solid. It would require a lot more work and be a lot louder and and yeah. But that's what you see up here. You kind of see two 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 entrances that would be that would be work to get into, but easier than easier than going straight through, you know, the intact brickwork. <clears throat> How about right. a beach door to to create a portal between Sure. A portal if open you wanna, doors. Yeah. 
Now, are you want to create a portal where there are obviously there were doors, or do you want to just like right in the center open up like in like into just whatever's on the other side of like right in front of you? No, I would, I would, uh, uh, I, I would, I would pick a, a door. Okay. All right, um, the left door or the right door. Friends, what do we think? Left. Always go left. All right, left door. Left it is. Mm -hmm. Hold, please. Rolling. Ten. Yes, you get a ten uh, and no ones. You very cleanly, uh, but it's not a natural ten. Okay, so not a group. That's right. All right. You, uh, you, you very cleanly just portal everybody through there, um, right through the wall. Uh, and you find yourself at the, on the top of a staircase. Um, and, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, you see a wooden staircase, um, at the top of the staircase on either side of the, on either side of the banister, so kind of close to you, you see these, uh, uh, these like carved wooden ravens uh, on either side of the staircase, and the staircase—it's a—it's a, it's a kind of a grand staircase that goes down and down below. Um, actually, it's really hard to see in here because you portaled through and didn't actually break up. There's some light coming through the cracks, so it's very difficult to see the bottom of the stairs because it's too dark down here without some light source. Mage light. Uh, 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 sure. Why don't you make a make, yep make a spell roll to to make make magical light? There you go. Um. Um. Uh. So here's the deal. Your mage light, because again, that's also a partial success. Your mage light is very bright. Um. So it will it 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 will telegraph across rooms that you are coming. Like yeah. you can't you can't easily. You can't easily hide this. Like it I, is a glowing, bright, burning light. Like but a, you can, yeah, it's stick. Yeah, right. So you can, you can see. Uh, but, but if anybody can see you at all, they're gonna like, like if there's any line of sight to you, like you're gonna telegraph from rooms away that you're here. Um, okay. So, but now that you have the light, you can see that there's sort of like, like a hanging, like, like wooden chandelier, like over the staircase going down. You see these two carved birds down at the bottom. You see like. Like sort of like a like the bottom of the staircase, but it's actually um, it doesn't open up into like a larger room. You actually see three doors down at the bottom, um, on 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 the on the lower level, uh, and then there's and then there's basically just one other door up here, um, where you see uh, let's see, you see what does that door look like? Um, it's just a plain wooden door. I mean, it's a nice door for a keep. It's not like a not like a servant store or something. But there's just there's there's a, basically you're on a landing. There's a big staircase down to sort of a, another landing with three doors out of it, and then there's a and then there's just one other door up here, and then there's the 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 the, the, the portal that closed behind you. There's a there's a pair of glass doors that would go out onto the veranda, but you can again see this cracked brickwork. On the other side, because you didn't remove it. <laughs> now, just uh, from my sense of casing this place and my sense of geometry, it, is the sense that that landing down there would be the ground floor, and that one of these doors would be like the the main door coming into the keep? No, no, okay. those are definitely interior doors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just looking around with eyeballs, is it covered with dust, or are there some parts that are less dusty, like from motion or living creatures? Yeah, you see signs of obvious traffic up and down through here. Yeah. Looks like all the doors are equally used. Um, you're not sure about downstairs. You'd have to go downstairs to be sure. But up here, you definitely, like, the, the handle's not dusty or anything like that. It looks like somebody's been in and out of the door up here. Shall we go listen at door and see what's inside up here? That sounds roguish. Hey, sure. 
Um, so you want to like just listen to the door that's up here? Yeah. Okay. You don't. You don't have to roll for that. Um, you do not hear anything on the other side of the door. I could try this aura thing again now that we're here. Just the sensing what's going on. Like, are there creatures? If so, what are their intentions? You know, and maybe a little bit of what's the history of this place? Is it happiness or sadness or murder or or what? Sure. You want to. You want to. Okay. Yeah. You want to. You want to meditate on on auras. Go ahead. Go ahead and roll your your auras. All right. So I'm going to try two dice this time. Okay. So I believe those are 10-sided dice. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There you are. Oh, you got a 10 uh, because of your auras. Okay. Oh, you, you have this, though. Man, you are, you are overwhelmed with all kinds of weird feelings. Uh, you definitely sense the presence of the undead. You sense the, you sense demonic forces. Um, you sense uh, moral. You you sense like mortal violence. Um, uh, the the history. The, this place is all kinds of like, like not okay. okay. Like you are you are you 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 sense you you sense yeah you sense uh, yeah again uh, undead. You sense d yeah demonic forces. Uh, mortal violence. Uh, th this 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 place has had a bloodied and troubled history. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> <clears throat> All right, door time. Yeah, but before that, uh, I take a quick. You said that there were these two carved ravens up at the top. Mm-hmm. I, I take a, a quick little look at those. Uh, Are they they just carved out of oh, the wood, or? Oh, I forget because you got a you you got a you got a, a perfect success with your because of the ten. Uh, it's not critical success, but it's a it's a solid success. Um, one last bit from your aura, you get the sense of that those ravens are watching you. Cool. Yeah, you you, you like that's the last like the most immediate sense you get is being watched by those birds. Yeah. So yeah. Can but I use my Marley, charisma on these birds to try and turn them to our side? Well, you don't really see any, like, they don't, they just look like carved birds. They're not doing anything yet. Well, I mean, yeah. if they're watching, okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but I So, think, Marlo, you wanted to look at them? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll step over there to, to get a closer look at, at the birds. Okay. Um. So, you notice, like, um, like where their feet would be like naturally like are supposed to like be naturally carved into the banister, right? Mm -hmm. You notice that there are like distinct crack marks. Like they're not quite attached to the banister the way that they like where like where they would be carved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But for now, otherwise they're not doing it. They're not looking around. They're not like you just it was it was purely that aura sense of being watched, but they just look like otherwise they just look like wooden birds. Yeah, but I I would point out to the others, say, you know, look, there's this this kind of odd crack, and and that that's with both of them on you know on either side. They yeah, on either side, yeah. Has Tim Arzo also shared that they're watching us? I'm sorry, I did not explicitly say that I was sharing, but you know, yes. And, I know, think if they both say friends. that, Sarah's going to take her mace and just wind up like a bat and swing at one of those uh, one of those birds. I'm sorry, okay. I got to stop that. I got to stand in the middle. I take my shield. I'm like, this is a work of art. We don't know the intentions of the artist or the intentions of the bird, and it is my sworn duty to protect it. Okay, so here's my question. Do you... When the paladin intervenes, do you stop or do you continue to swing through? I mean, I imagine the paladin's probably bigger than me, is armored. Um, I think I'll just roll my eyes and drop okay. my mace to my side with a huff. Okay, okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. So I just sort of give you an eyeball. And I make sure that I stand between you and the closest uh, bird at all times. Yeah. Man, okay. whether, whether it's justice or art, these paladins are so dogmatic. 
<laughs> oh. Okay. What next? Not a lot of wiggle room in paladinness, right? Mm -hmm. Even a paladin of chaos has strict rules of observation, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think Marlo would would it you know would head over to the door. I, I don't think he you know is gonna okay kind of mess with the the ravens. I mean, if anybody else wants to, that that's fine. But yeah, I'll, I'll head over to the door and 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 take a listen and see if there's seems to be any. Yeah, you don't hear anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and is the door uh, is it locked or? So you give like the candle a little like yeah. turn or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Doesn't appear to be locked. Looks like you could just open it. Um, I will report that to the to the company and say this door seems clear and it seems readily uh, able to open it. Push on through. Okay, you open the door. And Marla, are you the one opening the door? Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm opening the door. I'm not immediately jumping into the room, but I'll, I'll yeah. kind of open well, it. Well, Ovid's mage like like burning with light, right? Like floods the you know floods the room. Like it's it's like that right. like fluorescent almost pain. <laughs> like, Jesus, like right? Uh, you 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 know. Uh, uh, so yeah, floods the room. You see, um, you see what kind of looks like. Uh, it's actually a very beautiful room. It's 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 decorated. You see, um, but it's definitely set up for like for like tea service. Uh, you see a table, and there's some there's some there's about four like a round table with some four chairs around it. Uh, you see some uh, porcelain tea cups laid out at each thing and a thing, and there's a, there's a side table with uh, some with some uh, like a silver tea set on it. Um, and there's probably like a, a little fireplace where, you know, it's cold right now. You don't, you don't see anything. Um, uh, you, um, uh, you know, no, no signs of anything like burning in it or anything like that. Um, there's some nice soothing portraiture on the wall, um, you know, or landscapes, that kind of thing. Um, and then you see uh, basically two two other doors out of this room. You see, uh, kind of similar to the door you were just at, a nice wooden door, but it's got uh, but it's got it's got carvings on it, and the carvings are like um, like children like at play, like all all over the door. Uh, the other the other set of doors is actually these like bold double doors. <laughs> uh, that also have carvings, but they're they're like it's like uh, it's like it's like nature. Like you see vines and trees and and all kinds of like uh, just just little like each little panel on the door is carved with these like nature things. But yeah, it's a full set of double doors and a, a smaller door with 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 children on it, and then the door you just came into. And, Are these and, and, and it looks like the child that caused all the consternation, or they're just generic children. Like it doesn't. They're not like super detailed. Like Fisher Price kind of, kind of. But yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. And the tea set and, and stuff. Uh, they're not dusty. Does it look like they've, you know? No, those look like they haven't been touched in a while. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 the, the silver the silver tea set and the and the porcelain teacups are look like they haven't been used in forever. And they look antique. Yes. Yes, they, they do. <laughs> well, I, I think Marlo is in, inclined. I mean, he, you know, he will explain that. Uh, you know, the, the information I I got about uh, uh, Trist, Tristan came at a price. Uh, so I, I think we we don't know what else we're going to find here, but that you know, that tea set. The silver. Oh tea yeah, this, the the silver tea set would be a fine would be a fine a fine payment for for Carly. Yeah, so I I think I'll I'll head over there and uh, start to uh, it, plus it won't break like the the porcelain might. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So you know I, I think I will start to kind of uh, bundle that yeah. up. 
you can. Uh, you can actually add it to your thing as a as a rank three item because it's very nice. You can add silver key set rank three to your inventory if you wish. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because I'm just going to admire the carvings on the doors as you do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Looking closer at the carvings, I mean, it's very nice workmanship. Uh, looks very old, um, but yeah, like one is again children at play, and the other one is scenes of nature. Like nothing jumps out at you is particularly odd. Like they're not moving or looking at you or you know anything like that. They're just there. But it's nice workmanship. Like like uh, you know that that count that you were told about. You know, spared no expense. <laughs> Again, the, overall, if its room wasn't so disused after, you know, decades, it actually is a very pretty, calming room. It's just, you know, currently dark and covered in dust, and the paladin's creep aura is, you know, bad feelings. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but if it weren't for the history, this would actually be a very lovely, calming room. And, and, and the poor, you know, the, the, the you said that there were paintings uh, mm -hmm. in the room. I mean, yeah. is that are they just like landscapes, or I mean, is they're mostly they're mostly landscapes. Yeah, they're mostly like soothing, you know, soothing scenes of you know the seaside, and you know, again, uh, serene pictures of forest, you know, beams of light coming through on little fairy circles, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's uh, they're very, very beautiful, calming landscapes. All right, I vote for the child door. Gather round, prepare ourselves for whatever, and gently open it up. Agreed. Okay. Cool. Um, cool, you open... Um, you open the door and you see what looks to be a children's room. You see uh, a, a small bed um, and uh, a, uh, a, a small dresser and there's a chest, um, a small chest uh, on the floor and a little like wardrobe -y thing um, directly essentially across from you uh, is another door, another nice wooden door, uh, but you don't necessarily see any carvings. However, the minute your mage light floods this room, um, something under the sheet on the bed sits up. Like, you're casting your light, it goes across the bed, it, like, looks over, you cast it back, and now there's, like, something sitting up in the bed covered by the sheet. That right. wasn't there like the first time your light went over. Yikes. Sarah <laughs> jumped like behind her Perhaps. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and, and Ovid uh, jumps behind Tomorrow's home. Hello, friend. This is some wondrous art that you have here. Were you responsible for any of it? I don't think so. It's just the light. You uh, uh the thing under the you, sheet. You, you, you say that to the thing under the sheet. Yeah, there's no um there's no response. You just kind of get the sense of like where the thing's head would be under the sheet, just sort of turning in your general direction. Oh dear lord. <laughs> Breaking the tail all over again. You know, when I was a child, I had lots of fun with uh, sheets, and we would, you know, dress up in costumes. Uh, perhaps you're interested in the theater more than you are the visual arts. Um, it stands up, so now it's covered in the sheets, and it start. It's about child sized now that it's standing up. Uh, probably, you know, maybe seven or eight, uh, covered in the sheet, and it just starts walking towards you. Uh. So Sarah's going to grab her holy symbol and pray to Minerva to keep undead at bay. Okay. Um, you do that. Um, you don't even need to roll because you suddenly realize this thing is not responding as if it were undead. It's alive! <laughs> I duck back behind Tamarzo again. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like you, you do the thing where you present your holy symbol and you know what the, what resisting the undead feels like, and you're not getting that sense. Like it's like it's like no, not not your area. <laughs> this is why we keep a paladin around. <laughs> it's getting very. It's like it's now. Its arms are outstretched under the sheet, and it's getting very close. Okay, I take my perfume and I spritz it a little bit, and I say, you know, um, I wonder if this will remind you of the outdoors. Uh, perhaps you've been in here a while. Uh, what do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> You're right. So, once, it, once it gets into a certain range, um, it lunges at you, and the sheet. Like as it's lunging at you to grab you the pallet, it's gonna it's going for your throat, like to strangle you. Mm -hmm. The sheet falls away, and what you see, let's see if I can describe this. Um, what you see is like, imagine you were able to. This is this is why I had a content warning on this. Imagine you were to take a child, skin it, tan that like leather. <laughs> Stuff it, <laughs> put like buttons where its eyes should be, and like sew its mouth shut. <laughs> um, and you know, so you see this like wrinkled, leathery, but doll like child lunge, and like it's it's basically if you, it's gonna strangle you. Uh, uh, I shall drop my sword, open my <laughs> arms, give it a hug, and put as much love as I can into my aura. Ah, interesting. Okay, make make an aura roll. <laughs> I mean, I'm committing. You all are welcome to like you know intervene yeah. or do other things. But if you want to hide behind me, okay. in the side of this like this this weird like stuffed child thing is going for him, and he the paladin drops his weapons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, and is attempting to exude love and caring. All right. All right. This, this appears like a three dice roll, so I'm going to do that. Sure. Okay. All right. Oh. Well, uh, so that's that's not a critical success because you got a one. Oh, darn it. Okay. Yeah. You're sorry. Right. So, so, so your, stre your, your your stress goes up by one, but you are completely successful. It stops. It just stops moving, but it's standing there, staring at you. Hmm. Cool. So is this some sort of a like a golem of some kind? Uh, but wh why don't I try to use uh, kind of a magical analysis to see? Okay, you can uh, again. Is that is that colored like with your investigation and that you're like really looking this thing over? Is it actually you actually have spell casting to do some sort of? Oh no no! This is definitely the opposite of what I did before, which was investigate with a little bit of. So oh, okay, magic. Yeah. This is really yeah. more a, uh, you know, di discern the magic of this. Because it isn't, it didn't get, it, it isn't undead. No. Nope. Right. But the paladin's aura, love aura, <laughs> uh, had, had, a, had its desired effect. So now this is more like a, you know, is this a construct? Is this a gall? Sure. Is this is this actually a kind of undead and Minerva yeah. wrong god to invoke? Yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. Okay. Okay. So, but you're doing it through more through spell casting than yes. through. Yeah, you are. You are like all right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll 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 go to three dice. Okay. Ten. All right. There you go. You get a success and no stress. Wow, you guys are doing well. Um. You, uh, you, yes, um, you definitely recognize, like, animating magic, right? That this thing has been, has been, has been gifted intelligence, that it is, that it is essentially an object, right? That, that, but, but it's, but it's been given quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of free will, actually. Like, but feels, but still also feels very amateurish. You've seen better as a, as a, as a wizard. Hmm. It feels like a first attempt. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so a, a well-intentioned uh, the the desire is there but more like the work of a journeyman than of a master yeah it's not it wasn't made to be inferior it was just made by someone who doesn't have the full mastery of the skill set yeah and in some ways that almost is like a success because it's a child and in that in that sense it very much just kind of has a very simple like it doesn't have a complete right worldview which is why it was so responsive to just this like energy from the paladin right like it just kind of was like it was like less of reasoning with it and more of like almost like a counter spell, right? Just enough to kind of like send this sense of like, hey, I'm not a threat, right? And so yeah, it, right, right. it stops, you know? Uh, Sarah looks around the room to see if there's any toys laying about. Mm. There are. If you, like that little chest I described, like you uh -huh. find like little carved wooden toys like in the chest. I think I'll, I'll tentatively grab a wooden toy and like hold it out to this thing to see if it takes it. Yeah, uh, it does. It reaches out and it takes it and it kind of holds it. it. Doesn't seem to really kind of know what to do with it, but it's like it's holding it. Yeah. You, by the way, with your, uh, you, yeah, you got a full ten with your with your 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 magic sense, right? Yeah. Uh, when I described it, by the way, you are a little horrified because you are convinced that this is, in fact, constructed from the skin of a child. Yes. Yeah. Um, just so you know, like, like that is real human skin that it that has been stuffed and animated. I pick up my sword and put it back in the sheath just to be clear that I have it for a future if needed. Sure. Uh, maybe we keep going and leave this creepy thing by itself? Yeah, and, and there's another door out of this room, is that right? I mean, aside from the one we came into, there was a... There's a plain door. A plain door. Yeah, there's the one you came in and then another, but less. It's not as decorative as the other door. It's a nice door. It's, you know, it doesn't, again, doesn't look like a servant's entrance or anything like that. It's, you know, given the same construction care that the rest of the doors had. All right. So I'll give it a hug. I'll say, uh, friend, nice to meet you. Uh, we're going to go on because, you know, we've got some concerns about some other people. So know that we care, uh, but we got some other stuff too and hope to see you around again. Mm hmm. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, so it follows you. Okay. <laughs> it actually takes your hand. All right. I just make sure it's my, well, okay. So I have a sword and a shield. Is that going to impact my ability to, uh, well, I mean, it things? tries to, it, 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 it try, I mean, at first it tries to take your hand, but if you've got your like sword and shield out, it just, it kind of holds onto your arm. Okay. Like, Sounds good. It comes with And are, are we go, we're going through the plane door now. Is that? Uh... Yeah. All right. So same deal. I'll sort of ready my shield and we'll gather around and try to be prepared and open the door gently and see what happens. Agreed? Mm, yes. OK. Um, you, uh, you open the door and you see, uh, you see what looks like to be like a workshop. You see like a wooden bench and lots of tools and, uh, uh, you see uh, on one of the tables another one of these children's husks, but it's still open and there's stuffing coming out of it. Uh, and there is there is a table with some books on it. Um, 
you see uh but the next thing is, is that there is another there is another exit out of here it's not directly across from you it's on the other wall but it's an open archway and the minute your like light comes in something very odd happens you hear like 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 a thumping sound and then all of a sudden that room goes like supernaturally dark almost as if something is deliberately countering your light like 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 you can just see blackness on the other side of that open archway hmm. okay I think Marlo, I mean, he'll keep an eye on the that archway, but I think he's going to inch over to the books that are out on the tables to see if he can see what kind of books those are. Yeah, and Sarah's going to race Marlo to the books and like, <laughs> no, Minerva demands knowledge and like push okay. Marlo out to the side so okay. she can see the books first. <clears throat> Um, as the, so it's the two of you crossing the room, right? Mm -hmm. As you are crossing the room, this, like, this, like, bolt of, like, 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 green glowing eldritch fire comes out of the darkness of the other room, like, right between you two, and then explodes, like, right then and there. Like, what do you do? And, like, the two of you have to respond to this, like, as you're crossing the room to this, like, exploding, like, small fireball of energy that goes off, like, right between you and, like, blast of... Uh, I'm gonna grab my holy symbol and pray for Minerva to protect us. Okay. Um, is that just for you, or are you going to try and, like, protect both of you with, like, yeah, this first Yeah, I, mean, I, I think we're pretty close together, so it's going okay. to attempt to protect both yeah. of them. All right, so if that doesn't work, then you're going to have to respond, Marlo, but but I'm going to let him do his, like, throw up the holy symbol and pray for shielding, so go ahead and make, you know, your, your mm -hmm. prayer roll. And this um, feels like three dice to me. Yeah, and you yeah. can include the holy symbol, so you can add two to the, okay. to the result, because you're, like, throwing the holy symbol up as, like, a magic shield. Oh no! Ooh, oh no! But you got seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Um. Cool. It is a uh, but, but you, yeah, your stress goes up by one. Um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your partial success here is you are able to protect yourself, but not Marlo. So Marlo's going to have to respond on his own because you, you just it's just enough to like ward you, but you just can't get that prayer energy out far enough. So Marlo, like, what's your yeah? What what's your own response to this to this exploding fireball? Well, I, I think in this situation, Marlo's typical response is to to rely on his dexterity to to try to kind of dart and dodge out of the way, okay, to someplace safe, perhaps like uh, if there if the table is close enough by or something where I can you know kind of uh, dart underneath under it a dive. Okay. Go ahead and make a go ahead. And, you have like dexterous or something. Correct. So, yeah, yeah, I have. Go ahead. Go, yeah. That's uh, why the shield didn't protect you. You you darted out of the way too soon. <laughs> he was trusted in Minerva. Uh, and I'm gonna go with uh three. I think dice. So I, I my stress goes up one. I get a with my dexterous, which is gives me a what yeah. a plus one. Yeah. I get seven. Yeah, which is well, because you're stressing only four right now, right? After it's this one, yeah. Um, uh, cool. Um, so you dive under, like, the table, right? Um, you're, so your partial success is that, like, you dive under the table, which, which gets you out of the way of the fire blast, but you kind of knock the table, which kind of falls over, and that, like, that half-stuffed child slides off onto the floor, and you're kind of momentarily pinned under that table, like, like you're 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 actually kind of trapped under it because it's kind of like partially collapsed onto you. Mm -hmm. um, so while that's going on, like, what do the other two of you do while they're like this fireball comes in, throws up holy symbol, dives under the table, collapses, the half-stuffed corpse thing slides onto the floor. What what are what are your immediate responses to this situation? I push my child companion off to the side, and I jump directly in front of the doorway and hide behind my shield. 
I'll be okay, a shield so you, wall of one. You are a shield wall. All right, awesome. You just jump in there with your shield. There's no immediate threats. Um, do you do anything, Ovid, in response to this? Well, I was going to do some uh, kind of analysis of the uh, of the child creature that was not animated yet. Um, but now that we're in chaos mode, um, I think my inclination would be to stand behind Tamarzo's shield and then try to illuminate the other space to see what actually shot at us. Okay, so you're going to try to, like, counter that darkness with your own, like, like force your, like, mage light more yeah. into, like, yeah. Okay, go ahead and make a spells roll to sort of, like, okay. yeah, to sort of counter the darkness. Four. Four. What's your current stress? Uh, three. Oh, okay, so you're okay then. <laughs> you still succeed, partially. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so you, you, you drive, you drive the darkness back, um, okay. and then, yeah, so there's, a uh, um, uh, oh yeah, okay, so here's your, here's, here's the complication. So you, um, the thing in the room realizes it's losing the battle, so, um, so it, it comes charging out. And what you see is this very tall figure uh, with like cloven feet and giant horns. And uh, it's, it's, it's got that like eldritch fire glowing in its hands, but it's still very humanoid. It's got this sort of like uh, mixture of red and green skin. And it actually comes charging out like a bull. Um, so Tamarzo, you're gonna have to deal with that. You're, you're gonna have to deal with this charging you know, bullheaded thing that's going to try and like just slam into you. That's like, fine. What do you do? I am planted. I got armor. You are planted. Yeah. I got shield rank two. Yeah. Let's do it. You can, yeah, you can go ahead. You can, well, you can do one of two things. You can either, you can roll, you can either roll with the armor or, be, you know, uh, specialty, or you can just use that shield at rank two. Uh, you can, can I use so, I mean, armor and shield and chainmail yeah. together to get a plus three while still using the armor? No, skill? you can only really use you can really you can use yeah you can use the armor skill and the shield for 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 a max of plus two. You can't really use the, the more than okay. one item. I'm good with armor. that. Let's do that. Yeah. Armor plus mm -hmm. shield for plus two. Okay, great, awesome. So how many dice do I want? Um, um yeah, up to three. It's your choice. Uh, one, two, or three. You're just three. getting a plus two on the tie on a highest one. All right. Damn. Okay. Well, first of all, that is a critical success. So you may take a specialty under armor or rank uh, two or armor advancement based on, I don't know, you could either put shields. So you have rank two and skills that you're block or blocking things or like, you know, whatever. Like solidity, yeah. unmovability, like just. Sure. Yeah. You are, you are, you can absolutely, when it comes to being unmovable, you can, you have rank two unmovable under armor or whatever. Yeah. Sure. So yeah, total success. So it it just slams the paladin just stands there, slams into the, you know, into the into the into the shield. The thing stands up and roars and says, and says, Tell Tristan, me and my mother will no longer concede to his demands. Can do. Where do we find Tristan? He looks at you and says. Are you not with his gang? Nah, we're our own gang. We're pretty independent that way. Do we look like the sort of people who would associate with Tristan? Actually, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is something for us to work on when we get back to town after clearing this place up. I, for one, certainly don't want to look like the sort of person who'd be associated with some lowlife like Tristan. So you're telling me that you are that you are yet more interlopers in my home. Well, we appear to be interloping presently, but... but well, we are actually uh, anti-interlopers. Uh, some folks interloped in a village, and it appeared that they came from here. So uh, we are totally against interlopers, uh, and that is actually our job here, is to prevent interlopation. OK. 
Okay. Do you want to make like a charisma roll to see if he like believe like you win him over? You're like, look, dude, we're you know we're you know we're not here to cause problems, right? Like, yeah, you can. Sure, let's do it. Try. Um, and, I'm gonna go try down and... to two dice this time because I feel like I'm uh, really pushing my luck. Okay, so okay. seven plus one gets me to eight. Okay. All right, he requires from you before he'll, like, um, he sees, like, the holy markings on, like, you and on and on the, on the cleric. He says, he says, if you are truly, you know, here uh, to do good, swear to me before you are gods that you will that you will uh that you will rid my home of these intruders so in, in response to him asking that i'm gonna say uh is your mom jasmine jasna jasna oh, jasna yeah he says yes that is my mother's name oh so this is your house okay I swear, Minerva, to rid your house of these interlopers. And what say you, knight? <laughs> Good sir, knight. Yes, I, I swear on my my muse uh, that we shall rid your home of interlopers. Okay. I swear on principles of yeah. science that we will so do this, 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 this giant... Well, he only cares about the two holy people, right? Because he knows about their gods, right? So he... he um. He visibly relaxes, like the like he puts the hellfire away. He uh, he stalks around the room a little bit, right? I mean, he's not he's not that huge. He's, he's probably like seven feet tall, uh, maybe eight with his horns. Um, he stalks around the room, and he's like, "I was too young to know what my mother did." to anger the villagers so, but apparently they imprisoned us in this place. We had to fend for ourselves most of the time I was growing up. But when my mother died, when I was about 10, of the cold and the damp of this place, she did not die. She awoke and hungry. And the only thing that would sate her was blood. And he actually rolls up his arms and he has bite marks like up and down his arms, almost like on, on both sides, like almost you would see like needle tracks from like a heroine, but there's bite marks. And he's like, I have done all I can to keep her alive, you know, all these years while I grew up and tried to understand what had happened to us, but I do not know. I just know that my mother hungers and will wither and die without sustenance. But recently these interlopers came and I, I, was, I, was, I was asleep at the time when they first came and I did not realize that they had encountered my mother and before I could stop her, she had killed one of their men drained him completely dry, drank everything that he had to offer. And then something strange happened. Somehow she became with child. And after, after giving birth, uh, nearly 24 hours after, a day after having killed this man, there was a child, a, a sibling, of mine. I'd never had a sibling. But the child aged very quickly and did not last. They seemed to share my mother's hunger, but I, I could not I could not feed it and me. Um and it it 
it was as if it were just made of blood and it drained away to a lifeless husk. And then the interlopers came back and she killed another one and the same thing happened. But this time that man has figured it out. He's been, he's been occasionally deliberately, he's, 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 he's locked the doors below and barred them with holy symbols so that neither me nor my mother can get out. He's cut us off. There's a vegetable garden out there I use to feed myself so that I then may feed my mother. I am now at his mercy, both he and her. We both of us, I will starve to death and then my mother will follow suit if we do not do as he demands. And he's been feeding his own men to my mother in order to take these children. And I, I do not know what he does with them. But these and, are my yeah. yeah. And his demands are what? I mean, he, he wants what? That, that, that your, your he mother. Wants the ch he wants he want the children my mother produces from, from killing his own people, as far as I can tell. Um, and as long as I let my mother feed on him and turn over the child, he brings me the food I need. Well, we can, we can remediate that. Does, does your mother need, uh, does she need human blood? I would assume so, given the fact that, I mean... She goes after people. I believe that it is only the human half of me that keeps her. I mean, it's why she's so kind of hungry. My my blood does not quite satisfy. It's enough to prevent her from dying, but it's why she was so vicious at the first chance to 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 to, to take on an, an actual human, and 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 clearly prefers Tristan's people. She feels more sated, more alive, more more like she was when I was younger. Hmm. Are you sure that your mother is still in there and it is not something else in your mother's body? When she is clear-headed, she remembers the stories of my childhood. She, But when she is in the fits of hunger, it's like she is but a ravaging beast. He said, when I first saw you, I thought you had come to collect the child that she is currently with, but it is too soon. She will not give birth for another several hours. And when she is well, what does she want? What does she say? She only wishes to care for me. She treats me like her son and that this is our home. And is this your workshop? Yes, this is a project I undertook when I realized that my siblings were unstable. I was hoping to find a way to preserve them. They are my brothers and sisters. Hmm. Well, this one here seems improved What's yes I, I i don't know like it the ones my mother when they grow up they're like children this one is barely a shadow of a puppet it was my first attempt i, I was working on another one as you can see as he gestures on the floor hmm. I was hoping I could find a real way to imbue them with life after they expire. Hmm. Well, we of the arts know that all things must die, but sometimes they can carry on through their creations. This is why we make sculpture and paintings and songs. Perhaps you could create art to speak for those who pass. But my siblings die before they've had a chance to live a full life. Even I've had more of a life than them imprisoned here. I have known the beauty of the garden, of the the chapel downstairs, the the you know my the care of my mothers. These beings live for a few weeks, a, a month or two, perhaps, and then they simply deflate. 
they begin to leak. Well, we are, we are certainly, I think, happy to help deal with Tristan. The, the question that comes to my mind is if, if we are successful in dealing with Tristan, I mean, where, where does that leave you and your mother then? Mm -hmm. He says, well, we've been living here quite peacefully for quite some time, but as I said, I, I have kept her in kind of a half-life with my half-human blood. I fear that I, I do not know what she will do now that she has had the, the taste of of true, you know, of true human blood. She's been more alert, more, more herself, more ambitious than I remember her. But perhaps we can go back to living the existence we were away from 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 people. But I have concerns. Those are legitimate. I do not know why she, she says, I do not know why she is the way that she is, but it is how she is. And she's never, she's never given you any, any uh, hint as to why she is this way. She used to say something about my father occasionally, because I would ask. But her answers, especially in the throes of her hunger, were very confused. Um, it almost often sounded like she was describing two different people. Hmm. One charming, handsome, the other, he looks down at himself and says, well, monstrous. But I do not really know or understand my origins. Merely that my mother did not like to talk on the subject and seemed quite pained by it. But again, she is not as lucid when ever since her death, she's sort of half starved most of the time. And is there a, a particular part of the keep where she stays? Oh, her room is at the other end of this, of this floor. I keep the, uh, I, uh, I keep it locked most of the time. I have the key. I'd managed to keep that away from Tristan, but he found the key to the doors down to the downstairs doors and has kept those locked. Does she know where her food comes from? Does she know that you have been feeding her? Yes, she knows that I feed her. Yes. And she is content with that? Or was, at least? She was, although, again, it was as though she were always ill, kind of in a fever. Like I said, I basically just kept her alive. But ever since she got a taste of real humans, she's... After feeding, she has been more alive than she has ever been. She's no longer sick, no longer confused. It is the only time, it is, like I said recently, the one upside to Tristan's invasion, despite his terrible demands, has been being able to spend time with my mother again. And, and when Tristan shows up here, what, what gives him his power? Does he come with an army of other men, or does he have something he has several. He has several. He has several men in his employ. Not many, but, but I mean, he's got a gang. <laughs> and Marlo at this point apologizes and says, oh, and, and we, we've been rambling on, uh, but uh, I haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Marlo, and your name is? Various. My name is Various. Various? Mm-hmm.
I think while well, everybody's been talking to various, Sarah has gone over and I started leafing through the books that were in the room. Sure. And, um, they look like um, they're definitely all books on like animating objects, right? They're, they're arcane texts on imbuing things with life. Um, and she, after, uh, after Marlowe introduces himself, uh, Sarah says, I'm Sarah. You, you, you know that like part of like health and growing is that things eventually die, right? And she leaves through these books on reanimating things. Of course. I assume someday I will die, although I do not know, given that I do not know the nature of my own existence. <laughs> and your mother? He gets suddenly stands up very defensively and is like, what of her? Is she supposed to live forever? She will live as long as I can keep her alive. Okay. Slaps the book closed. Do you do you know when um, when Tristan is going to come here next? Oh, he lives downstairs. He lives downstairs. He oh. set up like an encampment down there. Okay. Is he here now? Probably. <laughs> oh. Well. That gives us a direction for next week, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're getting close to, we're close to time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I think that what we, what we need to do is to sort of acknowledge that I think we're all probably in for let's clear Tristan out and give him a little bit of the riot act. Uh, and, uh, but, as far as helping various beyond that, we may be in a philosophical place where we're a little in extremis, right? Like, obviously, he's acting within a framework that makes sense to him and that he can justify but I don't think any of us are going to be, well, sure, let's help you learn how to reanimate things. And oh, well, we'll just send a, we'll send a, you know, a blood ban out every, you know, I'm sure everyone in the town would be happy to contribute, <laughs> you know, like the milk man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it really work, right? So it feels like what our next task is, is, if he's here, well, we need to go down into the basement and clear him out. And then we need to do the philosophical work with Various to get him to a point where he understands, look, you, you got some choices to make here, kid. And we're not dogging you on the ones you've made. <laughs> so we would not have made them, right? You know, you 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 acted with a kind of integrity. You know, you know, plus three steps helping your mom, minus about twenty five steps for your your butt. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like to me. What do you think, friends? Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah, that that yeah, there there are obviously yeah two huge issues, right? Um, yeah, to, to deal with. And I think the more complicated one is the the one with with Various and his mother, right? Exactly how how that can get uh, settled. Yeah. The nice thing is that what we can do is say to Various, you know, could you please stop with reanimating stuffed children for a couple of hours while we sort out the Tristan problem, which we will sort out straight away. And then when we do, and that's all done, the four of us can sort of, you know, have some lunch and decide how are we gonna, what's our, what's our angle? Yeah. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. One question that still is in my mind with Tristan is this whole thing where he's giving considerably to charity. I mean, is that simply, uh, you know, a way to alleviate <laughs> his guilt over over this, or or is there something else going on with that? I think regardless, like he's done enough wrongs that that yeah. one right probably doesn't absolve him of all his wrongs. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Writing writing a fifty dollar check to. Uh, <laughs> orphanage doesn't quite get you over the line given what well i mean it's there's always the possibility that various by virtue of uh flawed reasoning might not fully understand what tristan intends to do or meant to do right we are getting it through this kind of filter right mm -hmm. so we'll give tristan an opportunity Oh, we shit him. <laughs> You're gonna hear him out. All right, okay. <laughs> it seems like I mean, to the point about well, he's giving alms. I mean, th through the use of child slavery to like uh, right, that, right? right. So it, <laughs> this is what this looks like to us. They're yeah. vampire children. <laughs> Well, he's also sacrificing his own men. So you know he's yeah, hiring the scum, and then yeah. he's yeah. he's feeding them, he's feeding the scum and the rich people in order to the evil in order to uh, give to the poor. Yeah, but that then brings us back to the point that that Brian made right at the beginning. What is this unnatural? This word that you use, right? Right. You know. Uh, uh, And, you know, our, uh, if you're vampiric, if that is part of your nature, uh, and, you can, and you can live uh, in a way that doesn't, you know, take freedom and life away from other people, who are we to say? Now, Minerva might say, this vampire is a, this kind of life is, is anti-life, right? Because it doesn't end in a way that is orderly. Therefore, you know, you pray for guidance and you're told, strike these vampires down. All right. You know, I think that, that Ovid, you, you know, if you, if I just look at this, you know, he's sort of an investigator, detective kind of magician kind of thing, right? Well, those people are generally more mentally on the orderly side, right? And so I would struggle, I suspect, with, yeah, let's let this vampire, everything else notwithstanding, let's let a vampire continue to vampire around, right? But who, who, who are you, random townsperson X, to declare someone unnatural. Well, by, that same, by that same token, it seems like we should let various uh, continue to reanimate husks of skin since that's not harming anybody either. Uh, right, but that's yeah. like, that's kind of a... a that's weird. creepy, but it's not necessarily yeah. evil, yeah. Exactly. It's kind of like, is this, is this yuck factor or is this actually immoral? Right. I mean, is he is he putting a soul in there, or are these just basically like robots? Soul, you know, ro robotic constructs, right? Yeah. Well, you know, wh what do you expect from someone raised under these conditions? I, I will tell you that that based on what he's saying, you definitely get the sense that if he hasn't succeeded in that, that's what he's working towards. Like he wants his siblings back, right? Like, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna. We're yeah. we're we're gonna struggle. I suspect with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's uh, he yeah. Definitely, what you've got like based on your success and your magic is a puppet, but that's like step one on like a bigger design, right? All right. Well, <laughs> we might need to be brought back into town and uh, trained in the art of. Uh, philosophical reasoning. Um, <laughs> Surely but, uh, the townspeople are an excellent source of that, yes. Well, yeah, there's no question that this town's uh, rabble 
are are the ones to engage in the questions of life and death. So what I think we'll do next time is that we'll we'll probably play for like an hour and a half to two hours, and then wherever we get, we'll we'll just stop even if we're not done. You might be able to wrap things up because the place is not very large, but um, but like we'll get to wherever we get to, and then um, I'll spend uh, I'll spend an hour or so, like the last hour, is sort of talking about like the thinking behind constructing this kind of place. If that's yeah, right, that'd right. be great. That'd be yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. When uh, when we did when I did the sessions with Ryan talking in the meadow was yeah. the was professionally very very helpful I've taken yeah. that forward yeah because yeah because I would like you to see a little more of the place and then and, and you know like you said talk to Tristan or whatever or see what else see what else you find um but then yeah we'll, we'll we'll do about an hour and a half to two hours and then uh and then i'll i'll spend the last hour of our of our session next week sort of saying and this is my process for yeah uh, for constructing this kind of place yeah oh. Oh. yeah okay so uh, okay. great i will see you all next week uh, on saturday <laughs>